Welcome, Facebook fans. This is OMBWarehouse.com. You are live from the Gray Goat Garage. Um, tonight, I've been a busy boy, and uh, sorry I'm a little bit late. Randy Blue, good to see you, brother. Hope all's well with you guys. And uh, I know you guys got some snow out there. Um, rained all damn day here today. Michael Ray, good to see you, brother. Um, audio's good. Thank you. We like that. Here, how about this for some audio? That's right. Arizona mini bike riders helping keep my Kool-Aid cool. Um, no sponsor endorsements here. Sorry. Boy, it's been a long week already. Happy holidays to everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Um, hey, Adrian, why don't you call me tomorrow, dude? And um, let's uh, let, let's talk about what's going on. Um, thank you for all the likes. I, I do appreciate that. That's in good good for me. Kyle Moody, the man, the myth, the legend. Thanks for stopping by, brother. Boy, that little West Bend sounds good with with that funky looking exhaust pipe. Um, digging that old stuff. And uh, th thank you for doing that bike so nice. Um, that that is a, a neat little engine on there, and you certainly have some great vintage parts there. And uh, I'm not a two-stroke guy. I'm a little too finicky for the uh, old gray goat, but um, they, uh, they they certainly are cool. So th thank you for doing such a wonderful job on that bike. Um, yeah, Adrian, you're a good-looking man, dude. And yeah, Brian wrote you in the house, uh, out of the shadows, liking that guy. He's pretty sharp. So we're going to have to sharpen up our Google skills because uh, Brian Roach is in the house. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll get a question out of the way before Simple Tom comes in. Um been talking to you guys about the old Bragumsa engine, and I put it on the rotator stand today so you can see it in all its glory. Um, it's coming along, still needs a coat of clear coat uh, or, or two. Um, I need to wet sand this again. You know, painting outside, as you guys know, get some junk in the paint, and um, I, I'm not real pleased with it, and it's a little bit rough right now. So we'll, uh, we'll be wet sanding the blower housing. I've got the block all done. You know what I love about the old flatheads is when Tecumseh or Clinton or Lawson or Briggs, when they painted an engine, it wasn't just to give a color. It was to seal everything up. And um, we, we certainly uh, got this engine sealed up nice. Let me get a little better into focus. Um, so I still have a couple things to do to it. But um, I, I did uh, brand new valves on this. And like I mentioned before, I put that uh, 97 SS cam in. And um, I'm going to give you guys a, uh, a couple links to look at. Um, I, I don't know if anybody of you, I uh, hope you guys all got your emails uh, in, in regards to the sale that we had today. Um, it's still going on right now. And uh, our high-performance air filter kits, they're coming with an outer wears pre-filter. Um, I went on and bought one myself. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a good deal. You must follow the link to get that deal. And uh, Vinny Mini in the house. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for stopping by. Um, Vin Vinny built some crazy stuff out there in Florida. But, um, you know, everybody's crazy in Florida. So, anyway, I, 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 I bought new valves for the Bragumsa engine because I had that 94 SS cam going in there. And uh, those are all included in the links that I just uh, put up. Um, I like the 94 SS, um, big fat guy like me. It makes great power down low, but it still revs out real nice, and uh, it's real neat for the flatheads. So I, I dig that combination. Um, I do have the billet rod and the billet flywheel. Um, obviously, the rod's in the block right now. Um, i got to paint these bolts, and I hate bolting the blower housing on. And the bolts are raw. They look good, but I know I'm going to mess them up when I paint them. So um, I'll, I'll be getting better at touching up paint. Um, I, as you guys know, I, I'm not a paint guy. I suck at it, but, uh, you know, the, the engine came out pretty nice. One thing that, uh, that I do is this is a standard versus a non-standard toilet paper roll that I wrap with blue painters tape because I don't like overspray on the seals and, and everything else. So I, I tape it up pretty nice, but you'll notice I, I have the crankshaft taped off and I took my toilet paper roll. I, I did have to cut it horizontally, um, longitudinally, and 
I just put that right inside there just so I don't get overspray in there. And then I'll come back and I'll put the seal in. Um, I know these yellow plugs here are ugly. Uh, I get that. But you know what? It's going on a yellow bike. So, you know, I, I try to color match, you know, because I'm, I, I'm into my interior design stuff too. So um, the, the, the yellow caps are going to be staying. And um, I'm, I've already started uh, the, the workings of a header here. Um, I've, got, I've got some tube that's going to get butt welded right on there like that. And it's going to go out the same side as the carb. And then I have one of the mini 91 mufflers somewhere around that I cut. Oh, it's over there. Um, then, then I'm going to have uh, welded on the end as well. But, um, you know, to, to adjust the valves on an overhead valve engine, it's simple. You, you just loosen the adjuster nut, whether it's a Hemi, it's on the rocker arm, or if it's a non-Hemi, it's on the stud. You loosen it up, you set your lash, you're done. With a flathead, you can't do that. Tappet rides right on the cam, and the tappet coming up here, that's your lash. Um, here's one of the often never read things that you get from a dyno cam when you buy a dyno cam. You'll notice uh, it, it talks about the intake timing, open and close, the amount of lift, which is 0.262, which is um, actually a, a little, quite a bit for a, uh, a Briggs flathead. The other thing about that I like about this cam is it's not hard on the valve train. It doesn't have real steep ramps and uh, you don't have to weld the lifter bores. But you'll see Right there, it says valve lash, 0 0.006 inches. Because I'd never done this before, I had old valves that I was able to practice on. I use these old valves, and you'll see the, the, the top of that's uh, a little bit ugly, um, just because this is what I use when I'm porting the, the, the block. That way, I don't touch the seats. So that, that keeps me safe by using an old valve on this. And uh, for you newbies that are in the house tonight, um, we do some games. Oh, hey, Jim Byros here from China. Dude, he's on the train heading to work. Good morning, Jim. Have a great day at work. Sell lots of meat slicers and saws, okay? Um, and, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the, the Arizona guys are in the house, too. And we got a new kid in the house, Larry Don Moore, Jr. How you doing, Larry? Um, good to have you aboard. Um, ho hope I can teach you something. Probably not, because I'm not real bright. But, uh, you know, let's just hang out and have fun. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll drink a little nondescript Kool-Aid out of my Arizona mini bike riders koozie. Yeah, it's been a long week already. Um, happy holidays to all of you. Um, Vernon, we're going to get you set up. So anyway, what I did, you know, I, I, I'm sure there's a fancy machine that, that holds this valve perpendicular 90 degrees and goes across some sort of stone to remove some material from the end of the valve. That's where the lash is set, right here at the end of the valve. So I can assemble the bottom of my engine, have the lifters in, and then work on the valves through the top. And then when I'm done, put the head on, done. Um, I've had this ugly old Makita grinder for many years. It's got a, a few battle scars, but what I did was I took an old um, wheel that I had that, that wasn't wasn't real aggressive. If I put a new wheel on there, I knew I'd take material at, at too fast of a rate that I'd be comfortable with. So I used an old wheel that uh, was worn down pretty good. And even with my old blind eyes, just got it up against the grinder I grind it down. Clean it off, test fit it. Where's my lash? Too tight. Grind it a little bit more, go back, set it in, too tight. A little bit at a time. Once you uh, have this valve down too far, there ain't no going back. So just a little bit at a time. I did it with this. Um, I don't want to say they came out perfect, but they, they might have came out real close to perfect. Um, it takes some time. It takes some patience. Make sure that you keep that this flat on the on the valve as you're doing it, and make sure the top of the valve stays flat. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, I, I don't have special tools. Um, I fancy myself as a redneck, and uh, I've got a dip in. I'm, I'm drinking some some uh, Kool-Aid light, 
and uh, life's great. So don't be afraid to try some of this stuff. Um, you know, the, the worst is going to happen is you can mess up a valve. And, you know, val valves aren't inexpensive, if you will, but they're not terribly expensive either. They're 15, 16 bucks. Um, so think about that. Do it yourself. Um, th that's what this is all about. I like the Briggs, you know, we talked about the Tecumseh getting the dial indicator through the spark plug hole and getting this to this and, and be at 50 thousandths and then adjust your points and then put everything together and then see if it runs. Nah, Briggs, you just bolt on the coil, you put a business card in there, psh, call it a day. So that, that's the hardest part about this engine build is setting the lash, but um, I believe I nailed it. Uh, I'm right at six thousandths on both intake and the exhaust. That's always set cold and... Um, when you buy a dyno cam, besides the stickers that you get, you get an oil stained um, piece of paper that's going to have all the specs. I'm sorry that's not focusing in, but yeah, there we go. Six thousandths on the lash. Um, check lash when engine is cold. And they even recommend what ignition timing. And the, the ARC uh, billet flywheel already has 30 degrees of timing built in. And one thing that they say is 30 degrees timing advance. So we'll we'll be using the stock key that I just dropped. And, uh, you know, the billet, uh, I mean, the Briggs 5 horsepower had the aluminum key. Not my favorite. But remember, the key is just a reference point. The key doesn't do anything to hold this flywheel on. It's the taper here with the taper on the crank. That holds that that assembly together once once you've got it torqued down it's not the key that's just a reference point so um we'll get this put on um it, it was too cold to clear coat today you know what it rained in southern california for girls don't they warn you you know so it rained all day today um it was real cold yesterday in the 50s and uh i didn't have time to, to get any painting done so hopefully by next week i'll have this done and uh I'm, I'm hoping to get it fired up for you guys, too. Um, let's see. What, what do we got going? You guys ready to Google? Because I got some questions for you. Um, you guys can't have a dart cycle sweatshirt like this because this is one of one, and it's mine. Um, if you come over and fight me for it and bring a six-pack, you can have it. Um, but anyway, I just showed you an ARC flywheel. What is the part number of the Briggs ARC billet flywheel that I used on my Brigumsa engine? What is the part number of the ARC flywheel used on that Brigumsa engine? Justin Eichler's in the house. Mr. Taco himself. Um, brother, check out the Brigumsa. That's how we roll in the LBC, brother. You know, got my mini bike Paul stickers on there. And uh, even on the uh, top of the uh, Brigumsa air filter, and uh, got it all painted nice white. Got that 94 SS cam. It's gonna be a nice little engine. I'm excited about that. What's the part number of the flywheel that I used on that? Clay Harrell in the house. That is the ARC 6620. So Clay Harrell. Dude, I'm going to have to sharpen up my skills. I, I, I think I made easy questions tonight, and uh, I'm hoping everybody gets a chance to play. So Clay Harrell, Clay Harrell in the house. That's the ARC 6620, standard non-adjustable, standard diameter flywheel. Um, with, with my Briggs and my girth, I like to have a little inertia there. I don't need the small diameter flywheel that, that is the three horsepower size. So that works for me. So anyway, those guys over at ARC, despite the way they clown me, cheers to ARC. Love those guys. They do a great job over there. Oh, that was kind of nice. I wish I had another one of those. Anyway, those Arizona guys, you know, they came out here and, I, I you know, I talk about Dallas all the time. And Dallas uh, Jufra made 19.6 or 7 horsepower on the dyno with a non-hemi Predator with stock valves. Um, that, that goes to show you that if you make a sensible combination, you do the right things, 
um, you, you can make great power. He was only beat by a guy with two engines uh, that made 32.5 horsepower. But that tells me he built two 16 and a quarter horse engines. And that to me, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not down with that. So for the Joe's mini bike challenge, I gave Dallas that, that, that first trophy I made that I showed you guys. And um, I was going to take that back and pass it around. But I thought, you know what? He won the inaugural event. So I need to make another trophy. So I took a Briggs flywheel that the, uh, the, the journal here was roached. So I, I knew that I didn't have any love for this crank. So I cut the ends off. There's Mrs. Goat taking Junior to work because uh, it's raining. And um, I, I sent this uh, th this part of the crank off to, to Sam Bennett, Cambo61 at yahoo.com, and had him run it through his tumbler. Came out really nice and sparkly. It's nice and shiny all over. And I had this old, uh, this was some sort of stroker rod special 4.325 inch ARC billet connecting rod. And uh, we got that mounted on there. And I bought this piston off eBay. And the only reason I bought it is because it looked a lot cooler than some of the other ones because it has these funky little things over here. And uh, I've already got the top almost polished to where I like it so I can engrave it. And um, as I was, I had to grind the top of this, and get all the carbon off for one, and then get down past the little ridges that they put on there. But... Um, sparks were flying i don't i've never seen sparks off aluminum and i don't know what this thing was coated with but um it's not steel but sparks were flying when i was grinding on this so i um, gonna gonna have a, a solid little combination but it didn't have the standard 0 0.490 pin in it it had a 5 8 pin and i'm like ah snarkies so i had to drill out the end of the rod um i don't know where they get this aluminum and it is 7075, I think. Um, no, it doesn't say on this one. But um, that is some hard aluminum. I had a brand new drill bit. I had plenty of lubricant. I struggled with this. But anyway, this is going to be the trophy for next year. And this will be the trophy that will get passed around, handed out. And um, if you're at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion next year, um, we're, we're going to have the Grey Goat Horsepower Challenge. And that's all based upon uh, Joe's permission as well. Um, I, I certainly don't want to go to Joe's mini bike and, and step on his parade with um, um, e any goofy antics from the Grego garage. So that, that's not cool. But uh, I, I will talk to Joe first, and um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you in, in there. Um, Clay, I'll, I'll have to look at that later. Um, I'm a little busy right now. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I, but I did do a side popper with side exhaust. I, I'm wondering if that's the same engine that uh that i sold to the east coast um <laughs> vernon um yeah I, i'd like i dude i you, you must lift weights or something because i don't know how you get your head wrapped so nice um I, I i struggle at that and uh i i try and put it in the vice and get it done but um good lord your your wrap looks great so hey mike peaks in the house good to see you mike um so anyway after i cut that crank off well, here at the Grego Garage, yeah, the wife calls me a hoarder. That just means I don't throw anything away. I, I, I chucked this up with a 516-24 stud, chucked it in the drill, shined it up. If I'm going to make a tool out of it, it's got to be pretty, right? Like me. So I, I keep it pretty. Oh, So anyway, tonight we're playing for a sweatshirt because it's damn cold out there, okay? So um, if you win the, the, the quizzo tonight, you need to send me an email. My email is help. H-E-L-P at OMBWarehouse.com. You know, Simple Tom didn't send me an email last week, and he ain't getting nothing until he sends me an email. So, Tom, if you're on, send me an email. Help at, at OMBWarehouse.com. Okay? That's me, and I'll, and I'll do my best to help you. Even you, Adrian, um, you give me nothing to work with, but uh, we're, we're going to get you figured out. Okay? So, I, <coughs> I save this, but what I can do later is I can cut this off, I've already got a hole centered in here. I could drill that through. If I wanted to make an outboard bearing support, that's where I'd start, you know, because everything sits right on the crank. So if I add this to the crank, I can throw a three-quarter ID bearing that's inch and three-eighths outer 
and I can make an out, out outboard support with this. So I don't throw anything away. So I don't know what I'll do with this. It'll probably look good on my desk. Or not, because there's too much junk on my desk already. Anyway, whoa. Things were making noise over here. Oh, Tom. Tom's in the house. Simple Tom. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you win something, I need to know your address and uh, what size you wear. And then, Tom, I'll communicate with you tomorrow. Um, Jason Lee's in the house, uh, Mr. Horsepower himself. Okay, buddy. Um, yeah, Adrian, uh, call me tomorrow. Uh, call me at the warehouse, 877-272-7941. Say, hey, is that good-looking gray goat around? And they'll say, he's on the phone. And, and you'll say, okay, well, can I leave a message? And they'll say, yeah, and then I'll call you back. So let, let me know, and I, and I, and I, I pride myself in helping everyone. Um, you know, uh, check out the links. Um, you know, uh, old, old, old man Hint went crazy. So we, we've got some deals. I even bought some stuff myself today. Um, we, uh, we have the quarter-inch fuel line on sale. Um, you, you buy in bulk, it's nine cents a foot. Uh, I know the ad said 10 cents. We're 10% we're off 10 cents. Nine cents a foot. I, I bought some myself. Um, you can't go wrong at that. Um, if you plan on buying hundreds of feet, um, then the, the shipping goes up because dimensional weight. You know, if, if you're selling a box of feathers in a, in a 12 by 12 by 12 box, you don't pay for the weight, you pay for the dimension. So anyway, that, that is a great deal. And even somebody that bought, um, I think, a couple hundred feet today, uh, the shipping, it's still netted out at, at 30 cents a foot after shipping. So that, that's a great deal. Um, one thing that I, that I did is, um, you know, I'm working on this doodle bug. You can sort of see right, right the front of it right there. Building this for my daughter. She'll never ride it, but um, building it anyway. And using our doodle bug adapter, you can see that with this sprocket, I like this sprocket because it has some holes in it, gives it a little flare, but I can get, I can get a fingernail in there. And, and that prevented this, I, I didn't want to bolt this right on and just pray, pray to the sprocket gods that this was going to fit and, and, be, and run true. Um, that, that, that's an issue that we have with, with a lot of products is we're dealing with what I call stack tolerances. So you've got the standard uh, 4.563 register on either the split sprockets or the, the one-piece steel sprockets. And we have to accommodate everything. You know, that they're not, everything's not machined the same. We, we would hope they would be, but it's just not. It's just not a perfect world like that. So I thought, I need to get that sprocket centered. Am I going to run a, a beer can or a Kool-Aid can around that? No, I can't do that. And then I thought, what would the gray goat do? So what I did was because there's six holes in that sprocket, I took three of these. It's a, uh, I got a lot of stainless Allen head stuff around here. Uh, I hope you can see that, but it's tapered also. But what that taper does is when that taper goes down in, it's going to center in there. Here, here's a larger one as representative. You're welcome. So, with, with this, because there's six bolts in that hub, I use three of these, uno, dos, tres, and bolted half, the, half the, the sprocket on there. That taper on there will go down into that hole and center that. Then I can put the other three bolts in, take these out, put the other three bolts in, and my sprocket centered. Get it all tightened down, life's good. What's the problem? I don't have no problems. I have solutions. So let's get on to a quizzo question. I'm running on with the mouth, you know. So in, anyway, um, okay. Jason, I already showed that motor, and um, I got to keep some stuff a secret, but I'm going to show you some stuff tonight because I'm, I'm going to beat you guys soundly. Okay, um, you know the Grey Goat. I have a lot of resources that you might not have, and uh, I know you're awesome engine builders out there. But nah, we're we're we're, we're gonna kick some butt. Anyway, this one's easily Google Googleable. Joe's mini bike reunion. Okay, 
he does this every year. I think this was his fourth or fifth year. What city is it in? If you're going to Joe's mini bike reunion, what city will you be going to? Easy, Johnny. I got you guys covered, brother. I know people that know people, okay? So, yeah, yeah, I got you guys covered. Um, so, anyway, don't let the little stuff bother you. We, we can get past all this stuff. Shh. Simple Tom in the house. And uh, La Crescenta is, is where Joe's mini bike reunion is. So, thank you, Tom. Um, good grab on that. You Google awfully fast. So, um, you guys that from Arizona that were there last year, you know. So, anyway, Kurt, I dude, I wish it was in Long Beach. That'd be easier for me because it you know, only takes me 40 minutes to get there because I leave early. It takes me an hour and 40 to get back. So, you know, you got to go through the belly of the beast to get there for me because it's way up north and I'm way down south. So, anyway, um, there, there's uh, somebody that just joined in. His name is Jody Powell. And uh, for, you, the, for those of you that don't know Jody, I don't worry about it. All he does is make videos. Um, yeah, he, he's um, he, he's uh, a, a good guy, and, and I love Jody. And and you know that that's why I even have a Jody cup, and, and I and I take a shot for ARC, uh, a shot of Kool Aid, if you will, every week. This this is Jody's cup. Um, you know he, he's got to have a little like like this because he just can't run with the goats. So. Jody, I was showing this this special fancy um, rod that I had to drill this out to five eighths because I'm making a trophy for the uh, Gray Goat Horsepower Challenge. Um, I am looking for financial sponsorship, by the way. So you know, if if you want um, that, this is what my trophy looks like. So you know, if if you want to do financial sponsorship for the Gray Goat Challenge at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion, we've got a real dyno there, uh, chassis dyno for uh, motorcycles. And um, we've got some guys making some power out here in Cali. So, um, uh, Liz DeFrancis, good to see you. And Nancy, the mail lady, she's going to be back because she's got boxes for me because I love boxes. Not boxing because I used to get my ass kicked in boxing, but boxes. Okay. So, anyway, I, uh, I, I made the challenge to you guys um, a couple weeks ago. And I told you guys I was going to be running a max max torque clutch. So with my max torque clutch, I've got the black spring, which is 3,100 engagement. That's in the link that I provided for you guys. It comes with bushings and instructions. What I did was I got the D-drum, and I've given you a link for this. We've got these on sale right now, great price. So I, 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 I'm using the D-drum with uh, a 14 tooth um one of the uh noram sprockets that fits the the buller uh jammer or bully jammer smc type clutches so we call them bsj sprockets roller bearing and uh we've got max torque clutches on sale right now 24 dollars 99 cents for a three-quarter inch bore 12 tooth driver 35 chain um that's in the link that i sent you as well so um Old Man Hint and the Vic, they've been going crazy. So keep keep looking, keep checking your email because we've got stuff on sale. So this is the clutch that's going to beat you guys, Jason, Max Torque. Um, a lot of people are, are, you know, telling me, oh, Max Torque, you know, it, it can't handle the power, whatever. Well, I'm going to beat you guys with a Max Torque clutch, okay? And I'm probably going to have a clutch brake on it too. So because um, I want to be able to stop when I beat you guys. So, so we, we've got that uh, in the works right now. Don't let the little things beat you. If you need help, I am help at ombwarehouse.com. And, um, you know, hey, Kyle Calkins, he's from way out back. He's freezing cold right now. He could use one of these sweatshirts that I'm going to do for the Great Goat Garage. I know he can. Um, let's get on to another question. I, I, I know I'm running on here, but I don't care. It's my show. It's not yours. All right, you guys ready? Get your Googles ready for this. Briggs and Stratton makes a pulse jet carburetor. Hold on, I'm grabbing one. I just picked this one off uh, off eBay for uh, low money. 
um, somebody had it listed up there with a buy it now. And uh, I always search for stuff like this. I don't even have a use for it, but I bought it anyway. Uh, the Pulse Jet carburetors. This one has that fancy choke lever like this. Makes it real easy. Um, still has the uh, swirl blade in there that's supposed to swirl the mixture to, to, to make it better. And um, got this for a song. So I'm going to send this out to Sam Bennett, have it shined up a little bit, and then uh, I'll get it rebuilt. And then it's a good excuse for me to find something else to build. Right? Right. So anyway, the Briggs & Stratton Pulse Jet Carburetor, that's the one that mounts on top of the tank. It's got two pickup tubes, one that pulls fuel out of the tank with this diaphragm right here. This is a fuel pump diaphragm. Anybody that's a Briggs uh, five horse, three horse fan, if you don't have extra diaphragms, you're killing yourself. Um, they, they get hard, they get a little brittle, they won't pump fuel. Make sure you have extras of these. Um, and we've got these at the warehouse. If you can't find it, I can find it because I'm help at ombwarehouse.com. So it pulls fuel up in, in through this tube and then it dumps it down into this little cup that's inside the tank. That's where this pull, this fuel, this fuel uh, tube pulls the fuel up into the carburetor and then into your engine ultimately. So you have to make sure the screens are clean. And it, let's get to the question. Good Lord, running on with the mouth. But anyway, if this tube is cracked, you need to replace it. Because if the tube's cracked, what it's gonna, it's gonna be like a straw with a crack in it. it, it it's it's gonna wanna suck fuel up, but it'll suck air through the crack. Um, unless your fuel is this high and then it'll suck the fuel. But uh, once, once it goes low, if this is cracked, then, then you need to uh, replace this piece. We have all this stuff at, at the warehouse. So um, always have uh, extra uh, diaphragm gaskets for this. And there's a spring behind there. And th that's a big thing. I, I replace mine on the, the couple Briggs that I have um, every year just uh, to be safe. I always have uh, five or six of these laying around. So I, I like these carburetors. I really like this flipper choke because the Raptor carbs don't have any choke and, and that, that could be an issue uh, for us mini bike guys. Uh, not, not for us fancy boys like uh, Jody at ARC, but for us regular guys. So anyway, that's a Briggs Pulse Jet carburetor. And um, how many jets does it have? That's the question. How many jets in a Pulse Jet carburetor? And Jody, don't come back to me with some, oh yeah, it's got one issue. No. Jason, I will hit you up. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I like Max Torque clutches. They work well for me, and um, I, I've never had a problem with it. I know a lot of people don't like them, but uh, I dig them. How many jets is there in a Pulse Jet carburetor? Vernon. In the house, Vernon Adams. It's only got one jet. That's that right there. Once you take the, the adjuster screw out, the jet sits right behind that. It's only got one. You know, whereas like our um, our, our clones, GX200s, Predators, they have two. They have the idle jet, which is the plastic one on top, and then they have the one up through the, the, the center of the uh, float in, in that tube. So, Vernon, awesome grab, brother. Thank you. See, I made I made the questions easy tonight. And remember, if you win, send me an email. Help at ombwarehouse.com. You guys see how easy I am to get along with? It ain't no big deal. Don't be afraid. I don't bite much. You know, I won't tell you you're a ding dong unless it's warranted. But I don't do that. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm getting the, the, the kids bike uh, built, this duty bug. And uh, it's looking sharp. It's got nice blue paint, on, a nice blue powder coat, and uh, got the engine all mounted up there. Um, I, I did check to see if our Coleman uh, CT200U kit fits. It does. The, the header comes out a little close to the frame. So for you fancy guys like me that have uh, sharp-looking bikes, um, you know, I, I might have to put a tip on that to turn it out. But um, I, it's going to get a clutch for now. Um, I had an old Hilliard clutch laying around, and that's what the kid's going to get. But anyway, I had this old tank laying around, and I had this done for a different bike. I only put a mounting bracket on one side, but you'll see it has two outlets 
I bought this. This was an industrial air tank that I found on eBay, and I think I paid 10 bucks for it. Um, it. It's nice aluminum. It didn't come polished like this. So I had a buddy of mine weld, weld a neck on it. It's got a nice billet cap. But like a lot of you guys, if you don't have a lathe, I can't drill the center of this to save my life, okay? It's it just not happening. And I know I see that dot right in the center. It would be off, and it would kill me. What would the gray goat do? Well, there's already two holes in the bottom of the tank, right? Where'd that piece go? So what the gray goat did was take a brass fitting. Got a 90 degree fitting on there. And I put some copper tube in there. Okay. I silver soldered it in, but then I put a little bit of extra um, JB weld around it just to be safe. I did some careful measuring to get this right up to the top of the tank. Well, now I can vent my tank and not have it be on the top because I can't drill holes straight, right? Right. So I don't want to put this up on the, the fill side, obviously, because then I'll fill it full and it'll all run out the vent. But this will just go in the bottom on the other side, just like this. And now I have a tank vent that goes up nearly to the top of the tank, so I have plenty of vent, and exits out the bottom. Air don't know the difference, right? But now you guys do. So that, that, that's one of the, the, the simple things. I can keep the top of this temp tank real clean this way and um, make sure that uh, I, I'm vented so the, the fuel is flowing. And um, I've got a, a mounting bracket that I uh, am working on, and uh, I'm hoping to show you that next week. It all depends on how much time I have. You guys don't know. And, and, well, one one person knows, Jody at ARC, because I know he gets the amount of phone calls that, that I do. So um, it is, ooh, Evil Ed's in the house. Straighten up, fly right, okay? Montoya Dorch, the king of mini bikes, is here too. So, oh, and Dallas is here. Good to see you, brother. Um, yeah, we were just talking trash about you. Yeah. Come on, man. You know that. The goat got the love for you, baby. Mr. King of Horsepower. So, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll try and get that done by next week. Um, you know, we've uh, it's the holiday season, so um, we're getting a ton of phone calls. If uh, you've emailed me and, and you got a late response, my apologies for that. Um, it's a little bit crazy right now. So happy holidays and cheers. So anyway, um, one thing on, on, that I'm doing on the bike that I'm going to kick um, Dallas's butt with is uh, I'm going to have a need to run a fuel pump. So uh, OMB Warehouse, we, we've got your standard Walbro pumps. Um, these are great little pumps and not very expensive. And we also have the Makuni pumps, which are easily rebuildable. See the MIC on there? No K-E-Y, because this is not Mickey Mouse. This is a serious deal. Um, I, I've already gone over. Jody probably has a video for this as well, but how, how a pulse pump works. Uh, essentially, in the top of this pump, where the part line is, you'll see the bladder in there, and that, that's just the diaphragm. So as the, as the piston's moving up and down in the cylinder, it creates negative and positive pressure that is going to pulse this line. So it's going to make this bladder go, whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, Sparky Dog. Um, so that, that, it's the pulsing of the engine that pumps the fuel through a series of valves and bladders in here. So the bladder moves up and down, put, pushes and pulls the fuel, but there's one-way valves in here that, that allow it to, to keep pushing fuel. So like, like the Makuni pump here, it's clearly labeled. That's the out. Well, backwards. That's the end. All right. So you can see the little arrows on there. So make make sure you get the input and output right. You don't want to suck fuel out of the carburetor. Um, but uh, I'll probably be running the Makuni um, if it works for me. But the Walbro pumps, very solid, always work, um, continue to work. And uh, that's what Briggs and Stratton gives with the animal engines. Um, solid little pump, not a lot of money, 18 bucks, I think. Um, 
and I don't know. We we they don't give us arrows on these darn things. But anyway, the, um, uh, the 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 pulse and the input on the same side and the output on this side. We've got it labeled on the site. So if you need a fuel pump, what you need to do is you need to drill your valve cover out and drill it below the baffling inside. If you drill it above, no pulse. If you drill it below, pulse. So very easy to install. Um, I, I've, I've, I've got a video somewhere about that. If you need some help with a pulse pump, um, it's uh, for us guys that are going to be using a lot of fuel, um, great thing to have. And, um, hey, Sean's in the house. Good to see you, Izzy is. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Hey, David Darnell, how you doing? Dude, our stuff's still on sale. There's links that I posted up here. So you guys need to take advantage of that out, out there at Arizona. Okay? So we, we've, we've got some good sales. Um, you know, and Ra Randy talked. No, Tom, I just combed my hair real nice tonight. Um, got a haircut a couple weeks ago, but, uh, you know, I'm feeling sharp still. Looking good, you know. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I, I like my hair cutter. She's a nice gal. Um, so, yeah. So, in, anyway, we've got a sale um, going on till till the end of the day today. And uh, the high-performance air filter kit I uh, put up there for you. And um, the, the quarter-inch fuel line, nine cents a foot. Buy some. Stock it. Um, not great for Predators because they're 3 sixteenths line. But uh, heck of a deal. We, we sold a lot of fuel line today. I believe we ran out. We've got a lot more coming in, so we'll we'll, we'll serve all those orders. So, um, hey, John Spence is in here. Um, Semco, yeah, John, I um, I underestimated the, uh, the the power of Simco last year, and next year I'm I'm going to get you a lot more stuff because uh, you, you you guys are uh, pretty passionate about your mini bikes out there, and uh, there, there there's some crazy machines out there, and uh, I, I did get some pictures um, from multiple people, and uh, it, it, it is now on my bucket list. Um, yeah, Simcoe mini bike drags, uh, typically in August, um, you know, because it's up in Wisconsin and uh, or Michigan. I, pardon me, I don't know uh, which state because they're all the same to me because I'm in California. Um, but uh, yeah, those those guys are serious out there, and some serious uh, serious motors happening. So so next week we'll have that uh, that tank mounted um, for the. Uh, the bike that I call Blue by You, okay? Because if, if this bike goes to Arizona, it'll be faster than everything out there because those guys are slow. Um, they, they don't know. They have to deal with that heat and stuff. So um, it rained uh, all, all day here in Southern California. I know you guys are battling, um, you know, the cold out there. Oh, we don't battle. Wisconsin, thank you. Simcoe mini bike drags in Wisconsin. Um with uh, with you guys ha having such such uh, ugly weather, it rained here all day, which um, is bad for us, actually. Uh, we need the water, but uh, we don't need the mudslides. So all those big fancy uh, houses on the hill, I'm going to be watching the news tonight to see what slid off the hill. So um, you guys stay warm. That's why we're giving away sweatshirts now. Tom, thank you for the email, and uh, I'll get back with you tomorrow. So um, anyway... Um, we'll, we'll get that tank mounted up, uh, showed you guys uh, how to get a sprocket centered. <coughs> My next project, um, I, I've showed you guys a silver bullet bike. And uh, what I'm going to do is I've got this old swing arm laying around. I don't even know what it's from. But all I know is that it's going to get get widened in the back, narrowed in the front. And uh, th this is going to be going on the silver bullet bike because we got the setup going on. This is included in, in the link that I put up. You'll notice I've got the MCP um, ultralight rotor on here. And that's attached to the ARC rotor hub for one inch axles. This is our 14 inch axle kit. It comes with everything you need to make a mini drag bike, including these ginormous nuts. So if you like big nuts, th this is the deal to have. That's a one inch nut, but it comes with 
the bearing hangers, bearings, and the flangettes, and the hardware. So here you can get a better view of the ARC sprocket hub. Beautiful piece. Um, love ARC stuff. I'm, I'm a billet guy, and um, I, I wish I had Jody's job sometimes, unless he has to take more phone calls, and then I don't want his job. But I've got a 5-inch Douglas wheel. I've got a 12 by 6 by 6 um, slick tire on there. This is a Chen Xing tire. This is included in the link. And um, we'll, we'll take the other side off here. But we have these um, mini bike axle kits all the time. It's a one inch axle. It's keyed quarter inch all the way through. It's threaded on the end. And comes with the bearings, flangettes, and the hangers. So um, eventually what's going to happen is stay. This hanger is going to get welded on to the back of this swing arm. I'll probably uh, knock it down, smooth it out. Um, I've got some NASCAR struts uh, on the back of the Silver Bullet bike, and they'll go right onto this stud that's already there. So I'm going to leave the stud there and uh, just uh, ha have these uh, welded on. My welder doesn't know it yet, but he's getting a surprise. And um, he he'll do a good job of making sure that, uh, that it's nice and solid. I'm going to have to widen it out. But, you know, that, that, that's part of the process uh, that, that I actually really enjoy is taking some parts that aren't supposed to work together and make them work together. Um, so many people uh, find this too challenging. And, you know, just I don't weld. Um, but you have to find a buddy that does. Um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to have this MIG welded, but I could have it TIG welded if I needed it to. Um, but uh, got the five inch Douglas wheel here. Um, got everything just mocked up right now just so I can get my widths down and uh, see what I have to do to get this in the bike. Um, I've got a jack shaft on the bike, so that, that's going to be very helpful for me um, because I don't have to be real concerned about chain alignment. I can get the rear end set to where I want it, and uh, I, I'm excited about doing this. But I've also thought about this kit for other things. Um, because one inch axles are very standard everything's available for it um in the link that i've provided for you guys and let me uh throw that up there again in that link all, all this stuff is included um ian cordova good to see you brother thanks for stopping by um all this stuff is there but if I wanted to do a great big tire bike, like if I wanted a 19 or a 20 inch rear wheel, we've got uh, the, the aluminum um, Douglas wheels that are eight inch and hubs for those made by ARC. Um, and, and you can do a lot of different combinations. It, it, it can get a little pricey when you start getting into the hydraulic brakes and stuff like that. MCP, their foundry um, had some issues, so they went to all billet stuff. It is a little more expensive, a lot more durable. Um, but th this way, I, I'm able to, to mock all this up, but all with common parts. Um, the, you know, the, the cart guy's been using one-inch axles for years, and there, there's so much available that, that we can do just about any combination. If you wanted an eight-inch wheel on a one-inch axle, and I, I, I'd, I'd love to, to have a, a full suspension bike, with huge tires on it. Um, I like like the Honda Fat Cats. I love those bikes, but you know, those are unobtainable price-wise. But uh, you can put these, mount these on a swing arm, make a monoshock, make a badass bike. Montoya, make a badass bike, okay? Um, but th th this is the way to go. You've got a solid axle. You've got easily replaceable bearings. Everything is readily available. We have, um, sprockets for the for the 420 chain but one thing about th this sprocket this uh, sprocket adapter here this beautiful arc piece that's too shiny to show um th this has a standard cart pattern on it which is six holes on a five and a quarter inch pattern um with that they make a rotor that'll bolt right to that so you can put a 10 inch rotor on there and have all kinds of stopping power on a mini bike so 
one of these days I'm going to get a welder and, and, and a bender and watch out, okay? I don't know when that's going to happen, but let's get to the next question. Get your Googles ready. Let's get it on, okay? And, Jody, if you're still with us, yes, I'm looking for sponsors for the Horsepower Challenge. Um, this is an easy one. You guys can get this. What is the zip code for OMB Warehouse? What's our zip code? Eric, um, we don't have an EX exhaust. That is something I'm working on. I just don't have an EX bike here. Um, if you'll send me an email, help at ombwarehouse.com. Um, what I will do for you is, as I'm working on it, if I can get a prototype unit, I'll send you one. And uh, you can test it and fit it and make sure it fits on your bike. So, Eric, pay attention. Help at ombwarehouse.com. In the subject line, put, hey, Greg Goat. I will get your email. That's a general mailbox, but I will get your email. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to need you to take some pictures and do some measuring for me. Oh, look at Karen Krauss there. She's taking two stabs at it, but she got it. It's 19057, Levittown, Pennsylvania. So we've got we've got a four-way tie right now. Um, that's awesome. It's the first time we've had that. So th I guess this last question is more important than the rest. Okay. So we've got uh, Clay Harrell, Simple Tom, Vernon Adams, and Karen, uh, the queen of seats. Um, yeah, Karen, I need seats. Uh, we're, we're getting closer. Um, John Bennett, you Google fast, but you didn't get it. And Jason Lee, no, that's my license plate number, okay? Kool-Aid time. So anyway, Eric, send me an email, help at ombwarehouse.com. If I, if I don't have answers for you guys, I'll get answers. You know, I, I can call Jody and say, uh, Jody, what what's the square root of nine? And he'll go, come on, Eric, it's three. And I'll go, oh, okay. Jody's there. You know, that guy's sharp. Doesn't miss a lick. So can't get anything past him. So anyway, um, I am help at ombwarehouse.com. Um you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not fortunate enough to be like Jody where I just get to answer performance questions with the parts that they manufacture and sell. Um, I help you with torque converters. I help you with clutches, max torque clutches, because I love them. Uh, Jim Donovan, been making them since Moses was in diapers. Okay? Like me on Facebook. I like that. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Um, you know, if, if you have a, a, a special project, um, I'm helping a gentleman build a – what he calls a boonie bike. He's gearing it to go about 12 miles an hour, and it's got huge tires on it. We almost got this nailed. So I've helped guys with um, helicopters and ultralights um, with wheels and tires and brakes and all kinds of stuff. So if you have questions, don't hesitate. And if you need help, you can always call me, 877-272-7941. They're going to tell you I'm busy and I'm on the phone, and you're going to want to hold, and then they're going to say, gosh, he's uh, talking for a long time. You know, but I help everybody. And um, if if you don't get me, I will call you back. If if I don't call you back that day, I will call you back at some point in time. Um, email is the best way because I can do that while I'm blubbering on the phone. Okay, so reach out to me if you have. I, I I've done a lot of crazy things. You know, it's it's not not just something as simple as putting a vent in a fuel tank. You know, um, it's it's making a Bragumsa engine using a Tecumseh carburetor, a Tecumseh intake with a Tecumseh air filter on my modified Briggs. So it can all happen. There's a lot of possibilities. And with, with us having so many parts, I guarantee you, you don't know half the parts that we have because I've learned a lot in the two years that I've been there. I've, I've learned, I've found stuff that I didn't know that I needed to find that I did find. So send me an email, help at ombwarehouse.com and say, Hey, Greg Goat, dude, I'm trying to, to put a, a, a Yamaguchi with a, a Sumagachi, and where's the Dumafachi? And I'm going to say, we got Dumafachis here. We can do that, okay? All right. We've got a four-way tie. Good night, Vinny. It's too late for Vinny. Um, he has to get his beauty sleep. If anybody's ever seen uh, Vinny from Vinny's Mini, um, you know that he is a fantastically good-looking guy, 
and um, I, he's probably fighting off the chicks right now. So um, has to get his his uh, rest. So good night, Vinny. Um, anyway, you guys ready? This is the last question. Four way, four way, well, four way tie. Um, four people playing: Clay Harrell, Simple Tom, Vernon Adams, and Karen Krause. Approximately, how many cubic inches is a Briggs five horsepower or Raptor engine? How many? Cubic inches is a Briggs five horsepower or Raptor engine. This is child's play, children. I have some Kool Aid. How many cubic inches is a Briggs Raptor or Briggs five horsepower engine? Approximately, as posted. Cubic inches. How many cubic inches? And Briggs even puts that on, on the engine. Um, yeah, there's only four of you playing, but nobody's even close. Not even close. If, if you're a Briggs flathead guy, you would know that it's right there inside the head. And I'll show you that in a minute. That's how you know what head came off what. How many cubic inches? Clay Harrell in the house. 13 cubic inches. So Clay Harrell is our winner tonight. Clay, dude, you're the worst emailer ever. Send me an email, help at ombwarehouse.com. When you, when you pull a Briggs cylinder head, see right there it says 13. That's how I know that this cylinder head goes to a Briggs 5 horsepower engine because it's 13, 13 cubic inches. So this is child's play, folks. Come on now. We can get this done. 13 cubic inches. That's how we roll here in the Gray Go Garage. I didn't know. I looked at the head, and I, I'm sure it works out to 13.4682573, but it's 13 cubic inches. That's what they call it. So when you're working with the bigger engines, um, you know, I, 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 I'm helping a guy with a Model 28. Well, that, that's 28 cubic inches. You can tell the 13 because that's the first two digits of the part number. Um, all the Briggs 5 and the Raptors start with a 1, 3, and then four digits behind it. So, you know, if you're looking at an engine that starts with a 12, well, that's the four horsepower engine. They look identical to the fives, but they're not. If, if the part number starts with a 0, 9, that's a three horsepower engine. So it's easy to tell on, on the Briggs, not like that Tecumseh stuff. Bergumsa is the way to go. Okay. So hopefully I'll have this uh, sparkly for you guys next week and um, see if we can uh, get her going. And um, I've got links provided. Remember, we've got a great sale on the air filter kits. Uh, comes with the outerwares filter at the, at the, the pre-filter at the same price. Um, our fuel line, quarter inch fuel line through the end of the day. And uh, the clock is ticking on that because when it's midnight in Pennsylvania, it's all gone. Uh, 10 cents a foot. So that, that's a heck of a deal, especially for you guys uh, using a lot of fuel line. So um, there's no children in here. I'm a big kid. That don't count? Yeah, of course it does. I'm a, I'm a giant kid. So anyway, check out the sales. Max Torque SS Clutches. I bought one myself today. Like you, I buy right off the website. Um, you know, if, if, I, if I build a mini bike and I flip it, I, I don't. I don't want a discount on the parts. That that to me it just is not right. I, I don't take advantage. Um, you know, don't poop where you eat. So um, I bought. I bought one of the clutches today. It's it's going to get this um, fancy D drum and the uh, roller uh, needle bearing sprocket. So um, I'm going to take a Max Torque SS clutch. Use the D drum sprocket. You can't see it, but it's shaped like a D. That fits right in there. And um, th this is what I'm going to beat the Arizona guys with. So um, Ma Max Torque clutches. The big thing, nobody ever lubricates them. A couple drops of 30-weight uh, oil on that bushing will make that clutch last for a long time. So I I'm, I'm going to be uh, kicking some booty 
yeah, and bringing home the trophies with max torque clutches. Um, for, for me, it's the best value in, in mini biking. Even at the regular price, it, it is a good deal. They're great clutches. They're solid. And like I mentioned, uh, Jim Donovan and the guys, they've been making clutches since Moses was in diapers. They, they, they know what they're doing. It's made in the USA. Support the USA. Thank you for stopping by tonight, guys. Uh, I, I do enjoy my hour a week with all you guys. Like me on Facebook. Uh, I am Eric. I am the Gray Goat. If you need me, you need some help, you need some ideas, email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Please understand that right now we're extremely busy. The phone's ring off the hook. I'm answering a ton of emails uh, all day long. I will get back to each and every one of you. If you need something, let me know. Eric, the guy with the um, with the, the CT200 or even anybody that has a BT200 that wants to give me one for Christmas, I won't say no. So email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Um, we're constantly working on parts. I've got more stuff uh, in, in the works right now. We're going to refresh our header lineup. I've got some deport headers coming out, and um, we're going to have some good stuff here real soon. So send me an email, help at ombwarehouse.com. Any of you regulars on here that know me know that um, I stay true to my word. I'm going to help everybody out. And if, if you need parts I'm not, and, and you're going to help me, I will help you. I, I will get parts out to you, and um, let, let, let's start working on this. So we can work together to make this a, a great community. This is so much fun. Wear your helmets. Um, it's the holiday season. Have a great holiday. Chill. Drink some Kool-Aid, have fun, and uh, I'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And I got a new song for you. I, you know, I thought that I was uh, overplaying Lou Rawls a little bit. So tonight, we're going deep purple. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Looking for adventure. And whatever comes our way, yeah, I know we're going to make it happen. See the world in a loving way. Fire all of your guns at once and it's loaded for play. But like a true nature's child, I was born, born to be wild.